Hi, my name's John. Welcome to another Sunday night nightcap. In tonight's nightcap, I've got the normal mixture of machining, vintage steam engines, and car boot sale items. We'll get quite a lot of work done on Richard's steam wagon this week. The boiler inspector has come. Uh, it's passed its steam test, so everything's all ready to go, basically, now for another year. Uh, I'll bring one or two parts of the wagon home to modify. I'll do some the work in the lathe and a little bit of milling. We'll show some of that later on. I've got an update on Debs. Debs has now totally finished her treatment, that's it. Um, all I do now is keep an eye on her. I think she gets a, a check over every six months. She's really looking forward now to getting back on with her life. Um, try and put all this behind her. I managed to get to a car boot sale this morning early before it started to rain. And I bought a couple of pair of big stilsons. Or bigish stilsons. Um, they're both unusual, they're both unusual shape. I bring the camera in a bit closer and show you these. This one especially is quite a, I've not seen one like that before. They do get used quite a lot, they're used a lot on the steam wagon, has a lot of a lot of pipe work, which is basically stilson work. These are water dampers or water pressure vessels of Richard's sent the steam wagon. They go on top of the pump, the injector pump, that puts water into the boiler. What these do, they're filled with air, or it's full of air, and it's actually like a spring, like a damper, to take away some of the knock, the hydraulic knock that the pump causes. That's the original one. This is the one Richard had made. The larger truck precision engineering at Newburn made it. They've made a beautiful job of it, turned out of a solid look of bronze. The problem Richard's got with it is the end is slightly different to the original. Um, that hole in there is smaller. And there's a valve that sits on top of here. And you can see the cross-sectional area of that port there is a lot smaller than that one. Well, I can't get this emulator to drill it out, so I'm going to drill it on the milling machine. And I'll just modify the edges of that port. I'll just use a file and just hand file that to shape. I've got a milling cutter that's the same size as that. I'll be able to cut that hole out. I'm going to mount a clamp onto me. This is just a little angle bracket. It's a couple of, couple of bars over there and a spread that piece across. Should hold it. This, is set in, this has been set at an angle for the last job I did. It needs, it needs squaring up properly. Depending on what you're going to do, you would normally run a clock here, jumping down that face. But for what this is, it's pretty good at that. It really wants to fall over, oh, this bastard thing and get me. Continue now. It'll not take a lot to hold it. Pretty good there. Not one that over complicates things laying this up. That looks good there. Put the cutter in and let you touch it off and make any final adjustments then. Yeah. 
Ik word zien van de nation snoer. I'm going to feed this in with the knee, obviously you don't want to feed it in with a quill in case it grabs and pulls through. I need 25 thou off that face there. You gently push the cutter off. Ten thou, nice and gently. I'll change the cutter. That's ten thou, two for twenty. I hope you can see there that basically these have been opened out at 90 degrees so that wants to go across there the easiest way to do this is going to be a die grinder with a carbide cutter in like that obviously you need them on because this stuff flies everywhere and it's hot and sharp and nasty It's a nice new cut out and it's taking this out no problem at all. It's a little bit like gas fuel so the head. It's having the desired effect anyway. This vice has certainly showed its uses where you can pivot it around to get whatever, whatever angle you want to work at. That should make quite a difference to the flow of the, the water throw there. In fact, it's going to make a big difference. This is the first pipe wrench or Sturgeon wrench I bought. This one's a rigid. Rigid's American, made in Ohio. Quite a nice one. It's in good condition, the teeth are still quite nice and sharp. You can actually change that bottom. Although the bottom jaw there is held in by a rivet because that would be quality steel where this is lesser quality cast. Quite a nice tool. To, it's unusual to have in that shape as well. You get it all at places with it. This is the other one. This is a little giant 14 inch Greenfield USA. This one's interesting and as much as obviously it's at 90 degrees. But what you can also do, you can take it apart You 
you can turn the jaw out and put the jaw in that way and you can use that part of the spanner it's also got serrations on there and on there I've never seen a, a studs in this shape before like I say the world get used Richard's wagon will be will be going across there and living on there Total of today's car boot sale finds, but it was certainly well worth going just to get those two. I paid five pound each for them, ten pound for the two. You can't, you can't go wrong with that. You can't not buy them. Spot on look. Yeah. Hundred pounds. Mm -hmm. Hundred and fifty next. Spot on. On again, <laughs> looks like a good gauge. It's not bad. Two fifty five, we want, don't we? Working pressure, yeah. Spot on, excellent. Yeah, I'll just take it to three hundred. So, with the other side of the red line. Spot on. Perfect. Now I'll just check it down the scale. Proper gauge this. 150. Excellent. I think it's original gears off the wine, you know. Aye, that's nice. You managed to get it from somebody. I think the guy that used to drive the wagon when it was scrapped got the gauge. That happened a lot, that did, didn't it? Yeah. Excellent. That's ready for going on now. Eh? 